Joyce and Johnny, in my opinion, are uh, the perfect candidates to be early Zodiac victims. Uh, just the fact that somebody was in such a, a an unusual spot, uh, you know, the, up on that bluff uh, at night in February, uh, he seemed to have known their routine and was expecting them. Uh, the taking of uh, personal items was something that Zodiac did, not every time, but certainly uh, he did uh, upon occasion. And killing near water, targeting couples, uh, it just fits. You know, Zodiac didn't always take credit for his crimes, or maybe he waited uh, months or years. So uh, all, everything kind of fits in the sense that with Zodiac, there was no pattern all the time, and this would fit with that. The, the pattern of no pattern is kind of like classic Zodiac. So there's so many elements that fit with Joyce and Johnny's case. And I think Southern California, I think your area really is key to solving the Zodiac mystery. Everybody's focused on the Bay Area of San Francisco. And I think we need to look at unsolved cases in San Diego and Los Angeles County uh, in the early 60s in particular. Right. Uh, the Ray Davis murder... Uh seems similar to the Paul Stein murder. And uh, it looked, I mean, it seems like 22 long ammunition is a common denominator as well. Well, with Ray Davis uh, in Oceanside, uh, the fact that the killer called the police and taunted them before and after the murders, and, uh, and it was a cab driver just like Zodiac did in San Francisco. It's amazing to me that the, the killing of Ray Davis was not linked to the Zodiac until early this year. There was no nobody in the Zodiac world, professional or amateur detectives, nobody had ever heard of that murder of Ray Davis. And of course, once we became aware of it, it's clear that it's probably a Zodiac murder. I think there are other cases like that in Southern California from the early 1960s. And I think it's crucial to focus on that area of California in that time period, because focusing on 1969 in the Bay Area hasn't gotten us where we want to be. I think uh, early early crimes of the Zodiac, he may not have been as polished. He may have not taken credit for them because he made mistakes along the way. And it might be uh, that focus of attention might actually pay off. Right. Um, uh, so uh, tell, talk about the Swindle murders again. Um, uh, that was a sniper uh, attack, but he, he shot him from up on the bluff and then walked down and finished him off. Is that a characteristic? Yes. Uh, you know, shooting a victim in the head, Zodiac did that uh, on two occasions and apparently tried to do it on a third occasion with the known confirmed Zodiac victims. Uh, that's what happened with, with uh, 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 Paul Stein, the cab driver in San Francisco, and also the Zodiac's first confirmed Bay Area victims. Uh, the, the headshot is something that's not uncommon. I'm reminded of in the, in the Joyce and Johnny murders, it just reminds me of a hunter up in a deer stand. And it's just very similar to Count Zaroff, uh character in The Most Dangerous Game, which is a, a book and movie that Zodiac referenced. And it seems like he was playing out that kind of a role of uh, hunting human beings. Right. There was, so the information, the report that we uh, emailed back and forth about seems like uh, that report came when the San Diego police chief wrote a letter to another agency. Was that right? Right. When the first uh, Bay Area Zodiac murders happened, uh, I guess the, the law enforcement in San Diego recognized the similarities between their case and, and the Zodiac case. And there are distinct similarities, obviously, a couple that's a young couple that's targeted uh, in kind of a secluded setting and no motive, no established motive. Certainly the victims uh, in San Diego were robbed, but uh, the police didn't think that that was the motive. So in that sense, the, the, the two cases are very similar. But I think there's something that's been held back. I don't know if it's a communication from their killer. I would hope that if that's the case, that's kind of like definitely links it to the Zodiac. And I just hope if anything's been, been held back, I hope it's time to reveal everything. You know, it's it's 2020. The suspect, if he's still alive, uh, he's he, he can still be prosecuted. That's the whole point of all this. I don't understand agencies that withhold information after all this time. The police departments aren't forthcoming. You're not doing the victims any justice. They can still uh, get a prosecution. The guy can still be alive. And I hope that the police in San Diego 
are forthcoming about uh, Joyce and Johnny's murders and, and release some information. I'm sure they have information that hasn't been released. It's time. It's 2020. Can you make a general statement about the, uh, you know, all these amateur sleuths and yourself uh, after the, the Golden State Killer was identified through genealogy? What went through your mind and what were you hoping for in the Zodiac case? Well, if only the state of California would put resources behind the Zodiac case like they did. Uh, the California Department of Justice put their full resources behind catching the Golden State Killer in the district, and they caught him. And if they, if the, the state of California would put the same resources behind uh, trying to catch the Zodiac Killer instead of leaving it up to these uh, bankrupt police departments that don't have enough uh, officers to even enforce traffic rules, you know, the, I don't understand why the Department of Justice doesn't prioritize Zodiac like they did the Golden State Killer case, but if they would do it, I think they'd get similar results. But if we're just going to leave the individual police departments to try to solve this, it's not going to work. I mean, we've had 50-some years to show that it's not going to work. But state resources could make a difference.